Hello, I am Carolyn Monahan, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for the West Coast Chamber. In today's episode of Member Question of the Day, we're talking about employers navigating the policies surrounding employees coming back into the workplace. With me today is Kurt Wasink from the HR Solutions Group, and he's going to talk us through how to navigate creating those policies, how to communicate them, and how to address any issues that arise from that. So welcome, Kurt, and thank you for being with me today. Thanks, Carolyn. I appreciate the question. So the question has been a very common one with multiple clients of ours. Before we get into the client-specific part, where many of the tripping points have been for our clients is thinking most of this is optional. There are some very specific programs that I want to first go over. What's the legal requirements under the federal programs? What's the legal requirements under the state of Michigan executive orders? And then what other things we got to consider before we get into the client specific decisions. So maybe first on the uh, federal requirements, as many of you know, the Families First Coronavirus Act, what that allowed, it was the emergency paid sick leave as well as the emergency family medical leave. Within the state of Michigan, there's actually two components. One in the exact most recent executive order 172, it talks about an employer cannot discipline or retaliate against an employee who works from home because they themselves have symptoms, caring for a family member, uh, or were exposed to somebody who is positive. Uh, and then one other section is that in the phase four status of the COVID-19 return to work program, you are required for jobs that are able to be reasonably done from home to allow people to work remote, other jobs you can have people return to work for. So those are the key federal and state requirements that we have to be careful of. Then if we get down to the client specific portion, Caroline, what we have to do there is really look at the job. As some examples, you could have a job where it's very difficult for somebody to work remote. This could be an in-person receptionist. This could be a person who's working on the production line. This could be the maintenance person repairing equipment or processes that they have to be there. And that's pretty, that's pretty clear and easy. And then you have the positions that typically could be reworked from home. It could be the accountant role, it could be an HR role, it could be a customer service role, but don't assume because that works for one company that it's the same for others. In one company, they may have wonderful remote systems where you can log into your customer database and your systems direct from home and they have a laptop accessible. In another company, those remote systems may not be available and that same employee would be required to come to the office to be able to do their job. One other component to consider is the aspect of the job. It doesn't have to be an on-off switch. You may have a role that for 70% of the job, they need to be at work to be able to do it. You could be a quality engineer and you have to be able to be on the line to audit, to solve problems. But then when you're doing projects, that portion may be able to be done from home. And there's a third evaluation, which is what are those critical functions that you need to operate the business that you can require to be back for? Payroll and some of those type of things, paying the bills, that just has to be done. Then if we switch topics a little bit and go to, so what does this mean now when an employee is told by an employer, you need to return to work? Often some employees are saying, I'm sorry, but I can't return to work, or I'm not willing to return to work, or I have fear of returning to work. And in that case, there's two considerations, or first consideration is, do they have a legal right to be at home and work from home? And we just went through mm -hmm. the categories on that. The second consideration then is, does it work for that specific position? We talked a little bit about that. And then the one breakout from there is, you have to have some flexibility. So fear and fear alone, this is the key component, does not allow a person to have to work from home. Then after we figure out the legal portions, the medical portions, who can and can't come back to work, what roles just functionally can do it, then the last item comes down to fairness. And that's again where the challenge is. And I've often advised managers and owners of companies to simply say, we're not always gonna be able to do what's perceived as fair. This is difficult. We have to do comply with the law. We have to look at the different roles 
And it may not be fair that your role can't be done from home, but yet somebody else's can. You just need to ask for quite a little grace as an employer and then be flexible with your employees. But ultimately, if you come up with too hard lined of a policy, there's going to end up being exceptions that appear to not be fair. So to treat these as one off individual decisions mm -hmm. uh, is probably an appropriate way to go. You may have one employee who has kids in school, but those kids can't go back to the classroom in one school district. The person right next to them in the identical job, their school district uh, does allow in classroom. Uh, participation, though they're in the same job, same role, simply by the fact their kids are in a different school district may dictate why one can be home and one doesn't have to be. So it becomes very individual based on that person's circumstances. So ultimately it comes down to uh, having good communication, being flexible where you need to be. That's right. And those where you have employees and employers together both being willing to be flexible is where this has worked out well. Well, I'm glad we had you here to talk us through some of this. And I, I really want to thank you, Kurt, for taking the time to talk with us uh, this afternoon. Thanks for the question. It's definitely a material one for the Times. Yes. Have a great day. Thanks, Carolyn.